Well, God bless you and thank you for tuning in to another Decision Time broadcast. Listen, this is the day that the Lord hath made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. As the famous hymn says, whatever my lot, I am taught to say, it is well with my soul. I hope you agree with me. Well, today we are hearing uh, through the person of Elder Corey Davis and his message title is After Jericho. Such a timely and relevant message to remind us that after you've experienced such a great victory, the walls have fell down in your own life, then listen, whatever it took to get it, it takes to keep it. Whatever you do, don't change that dial. The Word of God is up next. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thy hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thou shalt do this six days. Say six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of rams, horns, and the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times. Say seven times. And the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall, sh shall shout with a great shout. See, there is an anointed shout versus it just being noise. Amen. A godly directed shout. Amen. And he said here, and Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said unto them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and let the seven priests bear seven trumpets of the ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on and compass the city and let him that is armed pass on before the Ark. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people that seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of rams Horns passed on before the Lord and blew with trumpets. Now, verse 10, I'm going to skip there. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice. Neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout then shall you shout. Now it's interesting how that he asked the children of Israel to circle the city, but don't say nothing. Mm -hmm. And see, that's where we run into problems. Sometimes we're in the process of deliverance and we talk too much. Mm -hmm. And, and see, see the, the thing about Jericho is that Jericho represents a place of victory children of Israel, their fame had went about Elder Rap and, 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 and Jericho, they knew that the children of Israel were coming. So they said, you know what? No one can come in and no one can come out. Jericho, the walls were so thick. Amen. And for six days, I want you to walk around it one time a day. And then on the seventh day, I want you to walk around it seven times. The trumpet's going to blow, and then you shout. How many of you know that, um, you know, if you pay attention and you look at what happens here at Israelite, just over the last 24 months, testimony after testimony, victory after victory, Victory after victory, bodies being healed, people being blessed on their jobs, promotions, God just opening up doors and just making ways for us. And so as I was reading through this, the Lord said, you know what? It's not a question of if I'm going to bless you. The question is, will you keep my blessing? 
And so the title of today's lesson is After Jericho. See, Jericho represented victory in our lives. And it represents the mountaintop experience sometimes that we have as believers. But how many know that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy? But Jesus said, I've come that you might have what? Life and that more abundantly. And see, one of the men in the children of Israel by the name of Achan, he was um, in, in, in Jericho and decided to take the accursed thing. And in verse 18, God told the children, and said, and ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing lest you make yourselves accursed when you take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a trouble. And see, that's the thing, how we have to understand that our personal mission and our personal vision is so important to God because it can impact others that are around us. Has anyone in here ever had a Jericho experience? Mm -hmm. and, 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 you, and sometimes we, we put our hands down and we think we all good after Jericho. I'm blessed and highly favored. Ask Elijah when he was on the Mount Carmel and dealing with those prophets and, and dealing with all those individuals. After this great victory, found himself running. And then fearful, and then to the point to where he said, I just want to die. After Jericho, you better keep on guard. Mm -hmm. And see, what, what happened was after Jericho, Elder Rap, the children of Israel had another battle coming. And the next battle was Ai. And so they sent spies to Ai to see how big the city was. And they came back and they said, you know what? We don't need to send a lot of people there because they are very, very small. Wow. That's right. And then they go to, unbeknownst to Joshua, Joshua didn't know that there was sin in the camp. In the camp. And that, that's the reason why sometimes we don't have the victory that we need to have. Is because there's sin in the camp. And Achan took of the accursed thing and had the audacity to take it into his house, yeah. into his tent. Uh -huh. And then had the nerve, as if God didn't already see it, had the nerve to try to hide it under the rug. And see, that's something that God's doing right now. All of this undercover stuff that's going on, God is about to pull back the covers. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil what? and the good. Think you getting by with God. No, 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 no. AI represents the next obstacle. Have you ever wondered sometimes when you just keep trying to do something over and over and over and over and you're not having the success that you want? Uh -huh. Now, sometimes it's just you got to keep pushing. But the scripture that I read says that I need to also examine myself to see if I be in the faith. Right. That's it. Mm-hmm. And, and God gave me just, just a couple little points um, for us that after Jericho, we can make sure that we don't lose our place. Number one, he said, I got to maintain my position. Not my title or my uh, position or my, my, my elder status or whatever, but my position in God. 
because what he told me is that there's a whole bunch of collars and suits and crosses that ain't going to make it in. And, and, and there's a whole bunch of suits and collars and crosses doing a whole bunch of work, but ain't pleasing to God. Hallelujah. I got to maintain my position. If your closet is your place where you meet God, you better stay there. Hallelujah. He that dwelleth in the secret place shall abide. And what I got to understand that is it's not about if he's going to bless me. Can I keep the blessing? Ephesians 1 and 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. I don't need to be an English major to understand that half means past tense. Means that it's already done. Hallelujah. I don't care what it looks like. Whatever God told me he was going to do for me, it's mine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Has he told you anything here lately? Hallelujah. Has he given you a promise here lately? Hallelujah. I need to help. It's hot up in here. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. But he's already paid the price for your victory. Romans 8, 31 and 32 says, what shall we say to these things? Hallelujah. As we're walking this life out, there's always some things that come up that look contrary to the promise. But what are we going to say to these things? Hallelujah. He tells me I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. If God be for me, who can be against us? Hallelujah. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely, say freely, freely. give us all things? Say, I got to maintain my position. And I want to encourage those that have been fighting in the gospel for a long time. Mother Rigsby, you know what this word says? It says, be ye steadfast unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Don't let nobody get you off your spot. Ooh, that's, ooh, that's for somebody. Hallelujah. Mm. Somebody in here, you, you know what? You, you made a decision. You was going to go the other way because of the persecution. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You was going one whew, glory. You were going one way that God told you to go. And because of the trial, and because of the tribulation, and because of the affliction, and because of even those close around you were talking about you, you decided, you know, I'm gonna take the easier route. God said, I need you to get back on track and maintain your position. Next, I got to maintain my focus. You know what? When God is blessing you um, and as he continues to elevate you, your circle is going to get smaller. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that's some of our challenge because you, you want to be friends with friends that you used to have. But, but you know what? God has taken you to a higher level in him. Come on, Amen. Matthew chapter 14, starting at verse 23. Thank you, Lord. I got to maintain my focus. And before we get into, you know, Lord showed me something. It had been a long time uh, since I flew on a plane. And so we went to Louisiana a few weeks ago and I forgot 
that, you know, as you have your phone, you got to put it in airplane mode. And, and in airplane mode, all y'all probably already know, you can't receive messages. And the only thing you can do is take pictures and play games. Lord said, I got a lot of my people that are in airplane mode. Airplane mode. They, they're playing with my presence, Elder App. Mm -hmm. Coming in the church doing spiritual calisthenics, thinking we're going to move God. Hmm. And see, some of, and that, that's a, some of us that are gifted, um, um, sometimes he's not, he calls that in the book of Leviticus, strange fire. He calls it strange fire. Strange fire means that there is fire there because there's a gift. But, but the gift hasn't been consecrated enough to where it's fire that God recognizes with. See, you can't go to the club all, all week and then come up here trying to lead praise and worship. No, no, you can't do that. That's not the Bible way. You can't drink all week and come in trying to teach Sunday school. It's not the Bible way. Strange fire. And you know, it's strange fire. That fire, Elder Rap, is going to come before God during Judgment Day, and he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. What do you mean, Lord? I prophesied in your name. I cast out devils in your name. Strange fire. You can't give an offering for the anointing. You got to pay the price. Maintain focus. Next is, I've got to maintain my voice recognition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maintain voice recognition. And see, the thing about that is, I got to know his voice before I can obey his voice. Someone read me Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 7. Thank you. You know, the one thing when you get a new phone, Siri, he's, please record your voice. <laughs> so I know when you give me commands, I'll do what you tell me. But you know what? God, he don't need me to record nothing. He already know my voice. But see, the thing about it is um, he wants me to consistently and you to consistently fellowship with him. Mm -hmm. Husbands, talk to your wife once a month and see what happens. I ain't going to say nothing. It's the truth in there. Marriage requires communication. And a relationship with God requires communication. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 7. Somebody read. And it shall come to pass, thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. to observe and to do all his commandments. Whose voice did it say? It says, the voice of the Lord thy God. Keep reading. Which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high mm -hmm. above all nations of the earth. Yes. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thine kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy baskets and the store, Blessed shall thou be when thou cometh in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. 
they shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Uh huh. Yeah, and some of you in here have been so concerned about the enemy. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily just the devil, but your natural enemies that may be around you. And the remedy and the solution for that is obey God's voice. Amen. Obey God's voice. And it said, all these blessings shall come on thee mm -hmm. and overtake thee. Overtake. If you shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. That means listen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And some of us fathers, uh, we know when we're talking to our children and we tell them to go that way. And the first thing that comes to their mind is the other way. And then when they go out and get in some mess and they say, you know what, dad, I should have listened to you. God has a more excellent way for us. Amen. Psalms 31 and 3 says, For thou art my rock and my fortress, and for your namesake, lead me and guide me. I just want to be led of God. Amen. And lastly, I love this one. Um, maintain a mission mindset. Uh-huh. And, 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 and see, what God showed me is that um, a lot of people praying for promotions and, and blessings but don't have a vision. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want increase, but you don't have a vision on what you're going to do when the increase comes. Mm-hmm. We're so worried about sometimes our bank account, but when God tells us to go, you know what? Go and give $4,000 to the Springs Rescue Mission. Don't ask me no questions. Just do it. Mm -hmm. Do you need to go on a 40-day consecration to do that? Right? Or you see the person um, at Walmart, uh, you're driving out, and they got a bucket behind them, and it looks like it's full of money, and the Lord said, you know what? Give them $5. Mm -hmm. And the Lord is challenging his church in this season. So it just, it just ain't about us. Mm -hmm. and, and what I noticed about Walmart, Elder Grimm, is that they have huge distribution centers. And the goods, when they come through the distribution center, they don't stay there long. They just flow in and out, in and out. And God wants to use us as distribution centers. Uh huh. But some of us are reservoirs. You know what a reservoir is? It dams up the water. So the water doesn't flow unless the owner of the reservoir wants to open it up. But how many know that there's a better way? Hallelujah. You know what the scripture says? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will follow. Mm -hmm. When you see kingdom of God, it means God's way of doing things. Mm -hmm. so, so, so when he comes to you and says, you know what? For I was hungry and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. Do they have to be saved for you to be a blessing to them? Right, sometimes we just bless people that look like us. We just bless people that socialize with us. Right, right. We, we, we bless people that don't get on our nerves. You know what? God says, bless them that persecute you. I don't, I don't need to go on a seven-day fast to be a blessing. He endowed you with power. Somebody say, he, he endowed, me endowed me with power. With power. Mm-hmm. 
Mm, yeah, yeah. Say that again. You're going to get it this time. He endowed me with power. Scripture says he gave me power to get wealth. Mm-hmm. Ain't no need for us to hide away. If God blessed you, be blessed. Walk in who God called you to be. Mm-hmm. I remember when I had my family in my mama's basement because of bad decisions that I made. But you know what? God was the same God then as he is right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know what? I'm not acting like I got some arrival spirit. Uh-uh. No, no. And see, that's another issue. Sometimes we feel like we've arrived. See? See? And when you feel like you've arrived, you can't learn nothing else. Y'all not going to say, <laughs> hey, no, no, you have not arrived. God says, humble yourself. Humble yourself. And for those of you that have made mistakes, God will restore unto you the years that the locust and the canker worm have eaten. <laughs> yes, he will. I'm a living witness. He'll raise you up. And if you feel like every morning that you wake up, you're like, Lord, I, I just, I just need joy, God. I don't, I don't need anything. I just need joy. David was in the same situation. He said, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Hallelujah. Do you remember when, when you first got saved? You wouldn't even step on a fly. Well, the time is up, but the word continues. Unfortunately, we have to let you go at this time. Listen, this message can be seen again or heard on our website, www.israelitekojic.org or our YouTube channel, Decision Time Enterprises. Listen, in the words of our pastor, remember today and always, whatever you do, you have a miracle in your mouth. God bless you.